Hey everyone, this is Theo. Today I'm going to review the Microsoft Surface Go 2. We'll see whether or not this is good enough for digital illustration and whether this is suitable for use as a digital sketchpad. This video is going to be long because it's going to be very detailed. If you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link to the text review is in the video description below. Now I have reviewed many Microsoft Surface products before. If you want to check out those reviews, um, yep, they are all on the same page. Okay, so first of all, this is actually a review unit that was sent to me from Microsoft Singapore. Big thanks to them. This is not a sponsored review in the sense that um, I have to return this and I'm not paid for this review. All right, first thing to do is to show you guys the things that are included and also the accessories which are not included. This is the wall charger. Here in Singapore, we are using this three pin plug. And this is the Surface connector. Now this charger, it's different from the Surface Book 3 or Surface Pro charger in the sense that there is no USB port here. The Surface Pen is not included. This is sold separately for US $99. This is an essential buy if you want to draw on the tablet. This comes with a shortcut button on the side here. Another button here uses this uh, Quad A battery. The battery life can last for six months to a year. The Surface Pen supports tilt and pressure sensitivity and there is palm rejection. The tip is user replaceable. Microsoft Singapore also sent me three type covers to show you guys. So you can attach the type covers very easily to the Surface Go. It snaps on magnetically and comes in three colors. The fabric is Alcantara. It has this very nice textured feel to it. The keyboard is nice to type on. The keys have good travel and feedback and there is backlight so you can use this in the dark. Size of the trackpad is comfortable to work with. It has the same width as the space bar and there's a nice click to it. One thing to note here is there is no control button on the right side so if you want to use keyboard shortcuts with your right hand, um, some of those shortcuts may be a bit difficult to reach. So for example, Control O, I can reach, but Control P for print or Control plus and minus for zoom, I am not able to um, use my left hand. I need to use two hands. Now these two colors, gray and red, they use Alcantara. For the black, this is some sort of rubberized material. The Alcantara is on the back. So this may be easier to clean compared to the Alcantara. All right, back to the main item, the Surface Go 2. Now this unit that I have, it came with eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, the Intel Core M3, 8100Y processor. Now this model, the second model, it's actually a significant upgrade compared to the previous model. The screen size has increased from 10 inches to 10.5 inches. Resolution has increased from 1008 by 1002 to 1920 by 1280. So this tablet is now finally able to play full HD videos, 1080p videos. The previous model can't play full HD videos because the length was just 1800. So now with the increased resolution, you will be able to see more details. Everything looks sharper, noticeably sharper compared to the previous model. And this is a 16 by 9 video, so you're going to see black bars at the top and bottom. For small displays like this, I prefer the 3 by 2 aspect ratio. And by the way, the speakers, they are stereo one here and one here and they are front facing the audio quality is really good um, for tablet uh, speakers the colors look great out of the box i have already color calibrated this and measured 100 percent srgb support and 77 percent adobe rgb support the maximum brightness is 360 nits Right now, I am running this display at about 60% and it's 
still really bright. This is a tablet that you can use under sunlight. It's that bright. The design looks good to me. The bezels are quite thin, but gives you enough space to hold with your hand. I like the rounded corners. It's quite thin. The width is nice for a 10.5 inch tablet. It's 553 grams. This is the LTE model. The Wi-Fi model is 10 grams lighter. Comes with the built-in stand. There is no lock with the stand, so when you are drawing, you are going to be pressing down and this is the lowest angle, which is not a very um, nice angle to work with because it's not good for your posture. So I highly recommend you buy a laptop stand to go with the tablet so that you can prop it up at a more comfortable angle. Laptop stands like this are very affordable, around 20 to 30 US dollars. Ports on this side includes the LTE SIM card tray, power and volume buttons at the top. On the other side, we have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB type C, and that's the surface connector for charging the tablet. And at the bottom, that's the connector for the type cover. Design on the back, it's very clean. That's the eight megapixel camera. The front camera is just 5 megapixels and this here is the micro SD card slot. I wish Microsoft would include this for all their Surface devices because nowadays you can get up to 1 terabyte of storage with micro SD cards. The material they use for the body is some magnesium alloy which has this really nice texture to it. And the build quality is excellent. This feels really solid and there is definitely the premium feel to it. The display is very glossy, very reflective and the colors, they don't shift much. This is, this is a really nice display. This is a laminated display. So there is no gap between the glass and the LCD beneath. When you're writing or drawing, it really looks like the lines are coming from beneath the pen tip. Let's talk about the internals and pricing. So the base model starts at US $400 and for that amount of money, you will get the Intel Pentium Go 4425Y, Intel HD Graphics 615, 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of EMNC storage. And the uh, top end model, that's the model with LTE, that's US $730, that comes with Intel Core M3, 8100Y, Intel HD Graphics 615, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB of NVMe SSD storage. I do not recommend the model with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage because right now I'm running a web browser with 5 tabs open and it's using 4.6 gigs of RAM out of the 8 gigs that's available on this device. So with just one single app and the Windows OS, it's already using more than 4 gigs of RAM. So don't get this model. And this EMNC storage, this is about as fast as those spinning hard drives, which is to say it's not fast. In the real world, when you power your tablet to start Windows, it's going to be slow. When you launch apps, it's going to be slow. When you open files, it's going to be slow. You get the idea. The model that I recommend is the one with Intel Core M3 8100Y processor. This is noticeably faster compared to the Intel Pentium Go and get 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of SSD storage. As for Wi-Fi versus LTE, uh, Wi-Fi is $100 cheaper. I recommend the cheaper model because you can get Wi-Fi by hotspotting your phone. By the way, the actual storage you get with the 128 gig storage model is 118 gigabytes and a clean Windows 10 installation takes up 12 gigabytes so effectively you are left with 106 gigabytes before installing your apps. Low storage capacity is not an issue here because you can use your own micro SD card. Now the OS that is running this tablet is Windows S, it's not Windows 10. 
For Windows S, uh, you can only install apps from the Windows App Store, which means you will have a limited variety of apps that you can install. Whenever you try to install an app that is not compatible with Windows S, it will tell you whether or not you want to switch to Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro. Go ahead and do it because uh, it will allow you to install apps like Photoshop, Clip Studio, and basically it allows you to install any and everything. And I don't really see any performance difference between Windows S and Windows 10. Okay, let me open this app. Welcome Bamboo Paper. This is the slow diagonal line jitter test. So it looks like I am able to draw straight diagonal lines slowly. This is very good. In fact, this is even better compared to the Surface Book 3 for some reason. Even though I'm using the same Surface Pen on the Surface Book 3, when I draw lines like this, I get little wobbles and jitters. But here, it's very straight. This is really good. And now let me show you the line quality test in Photoshop. And this is the launch time for Photoshop. Now the SSD on this tablet is not the fastest SSD out there, but it's still faster than the EMNC storage from the base model configuration of this tablet. So do get the SSD model if you can afford it. Let me create a new file. I'm going to create an A4 file so that um, you guys can see how much time it creates sorry how much time it takes to create that blank canvas now this definitely took much longer than i expected so it took a bit of time to create that a4 300 dbi canvas but after the canvas has been created the overall performance is still considered quite smooth Initial activation force for the Surface Pen is higher compared to Wacom, Huion, or XP Pen tablets. So what this means is if you choose a very big brush and you want to draw a thin line with very soft pressure, it's very challenging. So you do have to press down in order to get those thin lines and once you press down the line will be thicker than usual and also notice there is some latency issue as the line tries to catch up with the pen tip now this is not really a big problem because usually when i draw i don't draw like long sweeping lines like this because of the initial activation force, getting lines to taper nicely or gradually, it's very difficult. So here you can see when the line ends, there is this abrupt end. This is Clip Studio Paint, which performs better compared to Photoshop. Here at least the lines, they taper, but still it's not as gradual or as smooth as I want. But this is significantly better compared to Photoshop with this round end. So what this means is when you are drawing hair, for example, the uh, hair, the strokes, they don't taper. They are going to look like, um, they're just going to look weird. And you can see the pressure transition from thin to thick it's not as smooth as i want let me switch over to clip studio and this is clip studio so now i'm drawing the same thing essentially and you can see the strokes they taper better but still not as good as um, compared to pen displays or pen tablets but at least they taper they look more natural here. And the pressure sensitivity here, um, it just works better. You can adjust the pressure curve for the surface pen. It helps a bit, but it doesn't 
correct the problem with the higher than usual initial activation force. So when you want to draw with thin lines, most of the time it's easier to reduce the stroke rather than draw with light pressure. So I have just adjusted the pressure curve for the surface pen and I am still not able to get the lines to taper smoothly. See the abrupt end there? At least there is no major issue with line jitter. Drawing thin lines and lines Drawing thin lines and lines that taper, that's the main challenge here. So here I try to taper the line, um, but it ends, well, you know how it ends, quite abruptly. For this eyelid, I tried to draw this with very light pressure, but the line came out thicker than I expected. If you're someone who relies a lot on line art, it's going to be quite challenging to draw with um, this tablet. This is Krita. By the way, pressure sensitivity, it does work. I'll show you later on. Now the line quality here with Krita, it's the same as Photoshop, which is to say that uh, lines, they will not taper nicely and also notice some of the lines they are thicker some are thinner I actually want to um, I'm actually trying to get the lines to appear consistent but it's a bit difficult so sometimes the lines will be thicker than I expect sometimes it will be thinner than I expect Sometimes when you start with a thin line, you press down hard to get a thicker line and when you go back to the thin line, it's very challenging. If you take a look at this quick sketch, you may notice the lines are either too thin or too thick. So even though the surface pen is able to support up to 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity, or maybe it's 2000, anyway, the transition from thin to thick it's not that smooth and also the lines they don't taper um, so drawing is going to look weird because of the strokes the apps that perform the best on the surface go to are clip studio paint and sketchable this is Clip Studio. But even so, you will need to take time to get used to the pressure curve and the initial activation force. This is sketchable. This is sketchable. Finger gestures work really well. The pressure works fine, I guess. It's definitely more enjoyable sketching on Sketchable compared to Photoshop and uh, Krita. For some reason, it's easier to control the thin and thick line transition here with Sketchable. Here's a sketch I drew with Concepts. Now for this particular sketch, I chose a pencil brush so when I press down the pencil will be darker and when I draw with light pressure the lines will be uh, fainter and the lines you can see they are consistent in width this I think is the best brush for this particular app because if I were to choose the dynamic pen which responds to pressure let me increase the size. Again, the lines, they don't taper. And I have to press down like really hard to get the thicker lines. All right, to conclude, let me go through the things I like and dislike. 
Now this is a significant upgrade over the first generation Surface Go. It has a larger display, higher resolution, better color support, up to 100% sRGB, and the brightness is 350 nits, which is really good in the sense that if you want to use this under sunlight, you can do so. Battery life is better than I expected, seven, eight, nine hours, depending of course on the brightness and what you are doing. The overall performance is quite smooth, provided you get the model with 8 gigs of RAM and SSD storage. The ports USB-C, very functional. You can output audio and video. And if you want to charge the tablet with this port, you can do so, provided you have a powerful enough charger. Oh, there's the micro SD card slot for expandable storage. And overall, it's a very clean and simple design, very compact. Things I don't like, well, since this review is from the perspective, perspective of an artist, um, the drawing performance is just not good enough. I think the limitation really comes down to the Microsoft Surface Pen, which is supposed to support up to 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. However, the initial activation force is just uh, a bit too high and the transition from thin to thick, um, it's not as smooth. So when it comes to drawing lines, the lines, they don't taper nicely and um, drawing performance is just not good enough compared to pen tablets and pen displays. The best apps for drawing on the Surface Go 2 are Clip Studio Paint and Sketchable. Now, if you are thinking of getting a tablet strictly for drawing purposes, this is not one I would recommend. This is actually a very good uh, general purpose tablet because the performance has improved a lot. So if you want a very compact size general purpose tablet that runs Windows 10, this is one you can consider. All right, so if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you happen to be using this tablet, I will invite you to share your experience with others in the comment section. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you guys in the next video. Bye.